<laughs> Gotta go confront that bitch ass. I leave the kitchen. Rosa's still clutching the book to her chest. Excite. Summer story has more holes than a slice of Swiss. Time to chat him up again. Feel him up. Uh. Eh. Eh. Kyle, walk faster. Your name's not Alan Rickman. Alan Rickman was a qu was a man, and you are not a man. You are a coward. I move faster when I move diagonally, so. Quick save. Greetings, Mr. Hard. Got a minute, <laughs> you bitch. Please don't tell me you need another autograph. No, I've got some questions for you. Good evening. Thanks, Summer. This won't take too long. What is it? Look, I'm just an average Joe. A salesman who doesn't spend time reading, you know? But talking with you, a guy who's written a bestseller, got me to think. What's it like to write a book? To have strangers know you and all that jazz. So I was hoping you could fill me in on a couple of things. Like, how do you write a bestseller? Stuff like that. How does one write a best-selling novel? Is that what you're what you're asking me? Scoffing it. Yeah, I mean, you wrote the secret word and everybody read it, right? So, teach me. Tell me how to come up with a story that everyone loves. Oh, ho, ho. My dear man, the essence of a novel is not something so easily distilled. Come on, Summer. I ain't asking how to turn lead into gold. I just want a few pointers so I can take a stab at this writing gig myself. Mr. Hard. What you are thinking is very nearly impossible. Why? Wait, hold on. But but you did it. Mm, you can do it. I guess I got the idea after seeing that notebook. N notebook? <laughs> yeah, the old notebook that got delivered to me by mistake. That was the manuscript for your novel, right? I mean, it looked like the same story to me, but what do I know? So anyway, it's how you get started writing a book, right? Yes, but... Mr. Hard, you read my notebook! You read it! My diary! Yeah, I did. And you know what else? There's something odd about it. The handwriting in the notebook, not yours. Uh, uh, Give it up. The handwriting inside didn't look anything like your signature. Maybe you, I don't know, dictated your story to someone? This... this conversation is beyond the pale, sir. Beyond the pale indeed. <laughs> and you know what else? <laughs> See, I can't get that pen out of my head. <laughs> so... Your name's not Alan Rickman. You told me that your real name is Alan. You're a liar. Your name's no more Alan than mine is. What did you say? Martin Summers, not your pen name. It's the one your mother gave you. Now see here. I, I, I will, uh, oh shit. What's the problem? It's a simple question. I don't see why this is so hard for you. You... You don't understand. You can't understand. 
There are so many steps in producing a work for it. So, so many! Hush. Hush it. Why are you saying? Why are you mad, bruh? <laughs> Let me take a wild guess here, Shakespeare. I think I know why you're so bent over my looking at your notebook. The handwriting's awful. <laughs> Because there's a secret hidden inside. Oh, shit. And there's something else that doesn't add up, too. If it's your notebook, why did you send it to yourself? Well, I... I didn't... I... Oh, shit. I had someone send it. Here. For me. I... Oh, shit. Okay. It's been a good cop, man. I'm scared. <laughs> the author of the story in the notebook? <laughs> Come on, who really did it? Who was it? It's me, of course. <laughs> he just turned red. He got bad. Could it be anyone else? Of course it could be somebody else. Mr. Hart, on what do you base your assert assertion? How can you claim that I am not the author of your notebook? Do you have some proof to back your preposterous proclamation? If you do, then I must insist that you present it at once. Proof. Correct, sir. Alright. You want proof? I think I can come up with something. Excuse me? Give me your autograph. I hardly think that is time to... Close your head and sign and make it your real name. Got me? My real name? Sign here. Use that fancy pen of yours. Open my notebook and hand it to Summer. If, if you must insist, I say, Mr. Hart, you are being most disagreeable. Summer signs the notebook. I hope this will satisfy your mad request. Yep, yeah, that'll do. Now show me your old notebook. I beg your pardon? Your real name's gotta be written in the old notebook, right? I'm going to compare the signatures. Mr. Hard! That's... That's... That's genius. <laughs> they look nothing alike. Gasp. There's no way you wrote the story in this notebook. Look at the ER. That's not how you write them. Not even close. That's... That's... <laughs> so... Who's uh, Alan? What did you do with Alan? Who's Alan? Okie dokie. You got sad. Who sent the notebook? Was it Alan? Who mailed you the notebook? That, that, that. This whole thing reeks to high heaven. What are you hiding? Uh. He's not answering any of your questions. Who wrote the novel? The author of the story in the notebook. It wasn't you! <laughs> so who actually wrote it? Was it Alan? He's giving me all the correct answers. That, 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 that! <laughs> What's the connection between you and Alan? That, that. Oh my God. He 
You went from like da, sadness da, to anger. Da. What's the problem, Brosif? Enough! Who are you? Who hired you? Was it the publishing company or was it what? those D and D authors online? <laughs> you mean Dan? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was probably Dan. What are you babbling about? I don't work for any publisher and I don't know anyone named Dan. Don't lie to me. Someone must have sent you. Do not think to treat me like a common fool. I am not a stupid man. You kind of are. <laughs> Do you truly think to extort more money from me? What the fuck are you talking about, man? It will not stand, sir. I will not. Hey, calm your tits. You're getting all worked up for nothing. I'm not a private eye. I'm not a hired thug. I'm just a salesman who happened to run into you in this fucking hotel. But, but you discovered it! You discovered what? Discovered what? Oh, oh, me and Kyle are on the same page. My secret! What secret? Looks like it. Question is, which secret? The secret word? The fact that your debut novel was written by somebody else? Or that someone found out and is blackmailing you. You got two secrets, and now I know them both. That about cover it, or you got more skeletons rattling around in your closet? Mr. Hyde, I must ask you again, who are you? A traveling salesman. Like I said, pal, just a salesman. Then why are you going to expose my secrets? I never said I would. It's not my plan. There's nothing in it for me. And blackmail's a dangerous game that I won't play. I just want the truth. The truth? The truth is something I fear. Lest it be discovered and exposed to all. It haunts me and has kept me from even one restful night these past ten years. Mr. Hard, if I could take the secrets I've kept hidden away in my soul, if for one moment I could share them with another human being, well, I might not be too late. I might yet be able to make a fresh start. Tell Kyle. Kyle, listen. Please, Mr. Har, would you do me a favor hearing my sad, ponderous tale? Why not? When I was young, I wanted nothing more than to be a novelist. Upon graduating university, I found work writing for a small magazine. I reported local news by the day and chased my dream every other waking moment. And yet, as the years slipped by, I realized I was failing and fading. I was incapable. I had no muse to guide me. No words that could come. I, I, I prepared to let my dream wither and die. But it was at that moment, my darkest hour, that I met Alan Rickman. Guy who owns the pen. That's correct, Alan Rickman. He, he was my friend. Keep going. We frequented the same cafe and he knew each other's faces well. One day we struck up a conversation and soon after became fast friends. Our lives were very strikingly similar. We were the same age for one. In addition, we were both reporters and we had been raised by our fathers. The thing that surprised me most that was discovering Alan's dream for the future. As they may have surprised Alan Rickman too, 
long to be a novelist, and yet, although we shared many similarities, there was one aspect we were different. Yeah. Alan Rickman had not abandoned his dream. In fact, he was totally consumed by it. He pursued the craft with a favored fervor. Word. Fervor. <laughs> with a fervor, fervor and desire. Fervor and desire. <laughs> I could only faintly recall. Moreover, he was a man of immense talent. And I was a weenie. As for myself, I never shared my own aspirations with Alan. For some reason, I simply did not wish to speak to him of it. So Alan knew nothing of my impotent ambitions, and one day he... He gave to me a manuscript that he was... Was to be the entry in a winning writing contest. Oh fuck, you're an asshole, aren't you? Humbled by his trust, I gave it my full attention, reading it all in a single night. It was amazing, a work of singular power and beauty, and Alan Rickman had actually done it. He had created a snare of prose and passion with which to capture his dream. He would be a novelist. I couldn't think. I was drained, empty, filled with jealousy and rage, and and into this dark void, and even blacker thought was born. If only the manuscript were mine. If it were mine, my forsaken dream might yet come to fruition. And so I acted. I opened Alan Rickman's desk, and I took the manuscript. It was like being part of the waking dream where the actions were not my own. I took it home, typed it up, and submitted it under my own name. As you know, the book was named the winner, and I won the novelist. And I was the novelist. Oh, bitch. You're bitch. And Alan? What happened to him? Alan had been betrayed by his only friend. He disappeared, vanishing one day without a trace. Oh, how I have searched for him these past ten years. And yet, I am no closer to finding him than I was when I started. Mr. Hard, I became a novelist by stealing Alan's work, but... I do not possess his talent. Each book I write is poorer than the one before. And then, the unthinkable, my assistant down found Alan's purloin notebook. So you paid Dan off and he sent you the notebook. That it? Yes, it is. So why'd you choose this hotel to take care of your transaction? That, at least, is a question which I can answer quite easily. I had heard of this hotel from Alan Rickman. He told me that Hotel Dusk was a special place to him. He said something very important happened to him here. Something important, huh? Yes. Alan mentioned it to me but once. Whatever it was, I could see how he treasured and safeguarded it. Yeah, I treasure this rat hole, too. Mr. Hart, I... Can it! I'm done with you. I'll see you around. Thank you. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> Bye, Felicia. So, Summer stole his pal's story. Wonder what his buddy Alan's up to now. And what was the memory he told me about... What in the hell happened here? How many secrets does this place have? Starting to get on my nerves. Come on, hide. Think. Alright, hold on. I gotta get all this straight in my noggin. My noggin brains. 
Summer piqued my interest with his yapping about a painter named Astronaut. The game Rochelle buzzed and asked her to dig up info on the guy. While I was waiting, I figured I'd check out the room the other Kyle Hyde stayed in. With my old pal Louie's help, I got the key to room 217 and let myself in. That's where I found the lighter. The one that I think belonged to Bradley. But that wasn't the only clue I found in room 217. Along with the lighter, I also found... An old photo. That's right. I found an old photograph in room 217. There's a man and a small child in it. Probably his daughter. I finished checking out 217, then headed back to my room for a break. That's when I found the stack of cash hidden in the toilet tank. I needed to know who left it there and why, so I put on my detective face and left. That's when Rosa cornered me and saddled me with one of Summer's books. She insisted that I get an autograph. That's right. She asked me to get Summer to sign her book. Kyle Hyde, professional autograph hound. Cripes. I tracked Summer back to his room to get the autograph. That's when Summer noticed he'd lost something. The thing Summer dropped was a fountain pen. After 10 years, that pen still works. Interesting. Summer lost a pen. Same pen Louie found and gave to me. I gave the pen to Summer, and he signed Rose's book. But now, I was on to him, and getting more suspicious by the second. See, Rosa said something that got me interested in Summer again. She talked about... Summer's real name? Mm -hmm. That's right. Summer said he wrote under a pen name. But Rosa told me Martin Summer is his given name. No money's on- my money's on Rosa. I knew Summer was guilty of something, so I put him under the bare bulb. Guy cracked like Humpty Dumpty and spilled his guts about his debut novel. The big secret was... He is... He have... Ah, uh, yep. Correct. Summer stole the story from some guy named Alan. The same Alan whose name was inscribed on the pin Louie found. Searching room 217 confirmed my hunch Bradley was here six months ago. But now I got some other things to take care of before I can follow up on these leads. The guests here eat, sleep, and hoard secrets like squirrels hoard nuts. I was willing to let them take their private affairs home and let it be. But that was before somebody decided to stash a wad of cash in my john. Now it looks like I gotta be part of this circus sideshow. Well, so be it. I smell the- I feel the old instincts kicking in. And somewhere, a part of me grins. I'm still looking for anything that'll lead me to Bradley, but... Nothing's stopping me from taking out the trash along the way. Da da da!